I didn't talk about it in my essay because um, I couldn't really fit it in, but it really interests me, so I just want to mention it that um, it seems that as the martyrs are being let out, they're usually stripped of their clothing or they take them take it off themselves. Um, and this happens to Perpetua and Felicity, this happens to Blandina, this happens to Polycarp, this happens to um, Cyprian. Um, they either take it off, they give it up willingly, or somebody takes it from them, and then there's a description of them being naked. And But they're not like trying to cover themselves up, they're not um, trying to get their clothes back, and in fact, usually somebody offers them new clothes. And it's usually like a, a guard or someone in the audience who's about to see them die and they feel bad for them or I think it's... I forget, but um, one of them, it's a guard who used to be a Christian and he give, he offers one of them his cloak and in every single one that they're offered they politely decline the clothes. Um, I think in Perpetua, her and Felicity are brought back in given clothes because um, the audience is, it, it's like too personal for the audience. They can't see two women, naked women, be killed. But um, usually when they're offered it, they decline it. And I think that this shows a type of innocence. It kind of ties in with their humbleness and kind of the acceptance that their body doesn't mean anything. It's just like one step in their martyrdom, as it were. Um, so placed after the revelation, it could be seen as kind of a rebirth. It's like a maturity. Um, it seems it seems like they're, it's like the rebirth of their, of their soul almost, like they're becoming, they're becoming closer to God, they're becoming a Christ figure, and that's, that's the really important part, so I'm going to talk about that, but, um, the imagery in these martyr stories is very Christ-like, um, and because of that, it seems that these martyrs are seen as demigods. Uh, so let's let's start with Perpetua. She is approached on her way out by her bishop and her priest, and they want her to settle an argument. Um, it's a pretty petty kind of side thing that someone would ask you to do, and what's really interesting is that the priest and the bishop are higher than her and on like the spiritual scale so they should be able to you would think that they should be able to settle their own disagreement but um they go to her which tells us that she is higher on the list uh she's she's more important polycarp is led into the city on a donkey on a sabbath um in zechariah 9.9 .9, it says, Lo, your king comes to you, triumphant and victorious is he, humble and riding on a donkey. So that's pretty... That's pretty Christ-like. Um, he's also pierced by a spear after he's, like, tight. He's, like, they try and burn him, but the fire, like, engulfs everything but him. Um, so they come up and they stab him with a spear. That's really similar to the lance in John 19.34 where Jesus is pierced to make sure he is dead, uh, Spear of Destiny. Um, Landina is tied to a stake, um, which, quote, appeared to the other accused as the cross of Jesus, and, end quote, and, re-quoted, recalled to their minds that of Christ crucified. Blandina from the moment was Jesus to them. And seeing their sister on the cross filled them with joy, yeah, end quote. So she's actually being seen as Christ right there. So we can see this, this like rise, this rise. Their people are seeing them as Christ. Um, another thing that's mentioned is that in almost every account there is talk of being crowned. And um, like Christ being crowned as a son of God with like a 
his crown of thorns. It's like marking his divinity. Um, so it seems that martyrs have to be very pure to begin with, very innocent, um, but they also have to be educated. Um, there's not very many that aren't educated, whether that's book smart or like spiritual smart. If they're lacking one, they have the other, and they gain what they're lacking in their journey to martyrdom. Um, so, through the process of their death, they become really close to God, and their, their faith becomes reinforced, just like Christ. He, like, they take on this responsibility for the people around them. Um, and it, when people see it, they see how God has protected them, and they know that everything is going to be okay. It's like this spiritual journey. Um, yeah. I guess that's mostly it. I just thought it was really interesting, the formula that seemed to repeat itself in all of these. Um, it makes you wonder... Why? <laughs> Is, and, and the formula itself is pretty close to um, the New Testament, if you if you piece it all together. Um, the martyrdom, it, you have to go through this, like, maturity, and it's like a spiritual maturity. Um, think about that for a while, I think it's really interesting, and I'm interested in continuing to think about it, because formulas really when you see the same formula over and over again in these stories whether they are fairy tales or whatever you, know, you can't help but try and analyze them because it's obviously something that's been tried and true over time so there you go all done